A concept in minimalism that really helped me both one, accept myself for who I am and two, become a version of myself I actually enjoy spending time with is the idea of decluttering the person I'd hoped to be. This doesn't mean giving up on your goals, but it does mean realizing that you don't have the time and energy to be everything or do everything. It means confronting your attachment to some version of you that only exists in your mind and being a little bit more realistic. And most importantly, realizing that skills and meaningful changes don't come packaged with purchases. And that's important because people will try to sell you the idea that buying their product effortlessly glides into being a better human. Now, I should add that there are things we keep but rarely use that are purely practical, but I am talking about the things that have a real emotional burden with them. The things that when you consider getting rid of them, they make you feel a kind of panic. Something that we're attached to, to the point that we get a really strong emotional response to the thought of being without it. All the gear, no idea is a phrase that gets thrown around a lot. And it describes the kind of person who buys new instruments rather than practicing the ones they have because they hope that getting something new will encourage them to practice more or be better. These are people who buy a notebook in the hopes that that makes them more excited and motivated about a project. They are the people who buy new software rather than learn the intricacies of the ones they have. And I have been all of these people, so there's really no judgment here, but it's not helpful. It's expensive, and most of the time, it is avoiding a problem it's probably too uncomfortable to face right now. And decluttering helps us face it. It's important to realize that money alone can't buy skills or self-improvement or a better relationship with yourself or with others. It can help, yes. You know, you need a computer to learn how to use a computer, for example. And it definitely helps to have a guitar. If you want to learn the guitar, you might buy a book like Letters from a Stoic, and that might genuinely help your relationship with yourself and the world in a meaningful way. But these purchases aren't the only cost, and the monetary cost is probably the least important. The real price of self-improvement in whatever form is time and focus. That's the magical combination. And if we're not willing to pay that cost, then why are we partnering with money as if that is all it takes? Well, I have thought about it and I think that there are two main reasons why we buy or hold on to things that we don't use in the hopes that we will be the kind of person who will one day use it. We're either one, deluding ourselves or two, procrastinating. And it's really helpful to work out which one it is. Deluding ourselves. If we're deluding ourselves, you can get rid of the item in question. I promise it will be fine. There will be a weird period of mourning where you have to come to terms with how reality doesn't look exactly how you hoped. But this is a really positive thing to come to terms with because by shedding that attachment to what you could be, you get closer to what you are. And that's a really important step in developing a good relationship with yourself. Maybe you're not gonna be a yogi. Maybe you're not gonna read that book. Maybe you're not going to get into coding or learn the bassoon. All of this is completely fine. Try not to be hard on yourself and think of what you should have done as if you've let yourself down. The thing to remember is that if you haven't had the time or the energy to spend on something you'd hope to spend time and energy on, you've spent that time and energy somewhere else. You haven't, you haven't lost anything. It might feel like you have because us humans are incredibly concerned with loss. We fear it and we make our decisions based on avoiding it a lot of the time. But let's say you hoped to spend time learning to draw and you didn't. That time has gone on to things that were important to you at the time, whether that's other skills, having fun, relaxing, spending time with friends and family, making memories. It's not time wasted. We seem to think of it as time wasted, but it's time spent on areas that inform your priorities better than your vague hopes for the future do. And that is fine. And this could probably be its own video, but I wanna make a quick note here about the idea of wasting time because it's something I was thinking about the other day. Because we all know wasting time is a bad thing, but nobody really defines it. But you would probably throw watching TV into the suggestion pile as what wasting time is. So, little story. A few years ago, I was teaching clarinet to a group of kids and I asked them what their favorite music was and what they like to listen to. And one of my students, who I know knows I have a channel, so might actually be watching this, and hello, if so, but they said, I don't really have a favorite band, but I have a favorite song. It's called, I've Got a Theory. And I stopped and thought, oh, that sounds really familiar. I think I know that one. And then he starts singing it and I join in. 
word for word, the full song, but was just going for it, because it was a song from the Buffy musical. And everyone in the class was sitting there wondering what the hell was going on, as me and this lad were in full song. And it's still one of my favorite moments of my life. It was like a scene from Glee, but quite a lot more British. And you know what? If someone came to me now and told me I could have the hours I spent watching Buffy back in exchange for that moment, I wouldn't. It was so pure and so magical and I smile every time I think about it. And my point is that we can't know what's time wasted because we don't know the impact of these things. So I think we all need to be a bit kinder to ourselves and stop being so judgmental about what we define as a waste of time. We can't know, we don't know yet. We, we don't know what the future holds. We don't know the impact of the decisions we've made in the past. Let's say you were holding onto some clothes because you hoped that you'd fit into them one day. And it's been a couple of years now and they still don't fit. It's absolutely fine to get rid of those clothes. You might feel that it's a symbol of giving up on yourself, but it isn't. It's simply passing something that doesn't serve you onto somebody who it could serve. Maybe you could sell them and use the money to buy some clothes that you will wear. Maybe you'll give them to a friend or family member and see their happiness and get value from that. If you conclude that you don't have the time or energy or attention to spend like you hoped you'd have, you are deluding yourself by holding onto these things and it's totally fine to come to terms with that and be grateful for the lesson that you learned. Procrastinating. But if you do not want to come to terms with that, if you feel a fire inside of you that says, this feels like too big a sacrifice to make, then I'm happy to inform you, you are simply procrastinating. And I invite you now to prove to yourself that it makes sense for you to keep the thing that you feel resistance about decluttering. Are you willing to dedicate time, energy, and focus into something you want to achieve? Are you going to spend some time each day or each week working towards the goal that the item represents for you? Are you willing to accept that the thing you're working towards is probably challenging and difficult and you're gonna to have to face discomfort along the way? If the answer is no, again, that is totally fine, but it does mean you probably don't need to hang on to things that you're not using. But if the answer is yes, then start now. The fact that you haven't started yet means that it's probably too uncomfortable to face right now. The first thing you need to do is, as soon as this video is over, is ask yourself why you haven't started yet and maybe journal about it and become okay with the answer you give and be grateful that you have learned that about yourself. That's the beauty of decluttering. Every single thing you give thought to teaches you something about yourself. For example, I used to have a real thirst for notebooks. I still kind of do, but I had a bad habit of never writing in them or I'd write a little bit and then I'd want a new one because the thing I was really after was the excitement and the potential and all the possibilities for the blank pages. It wasn't really actually needing a notebook. So if I was gonna open my soul about this to you right now, it would go a bit like this. Why did you buy a notebook? Because I wanted to turn it into something helpful for my life. Why didn't you use it? Because it felt like too much pressure to write neatly or give the notebook a purpose that I felt comfortable sticking with. Why was that important to you? Probably because I don't like making mistakes. Why was making mistakes such a problem for you? Because then it wouldn't be neat and perfect. Why was being perfect important to you? Because I feel like that's what people want me to be. So I try to be that. Why does it matter what people want you to be? Because I feel this constant and almost debilitating need to please. Why do you feel the need to please? Because I worry that they won't like me. And why is it important that people like you? I don't know. <laughs> I guess not everyone likes everyone else, but it makes me feel uncomfortable to know that someone might not like me. Why? Because their opinion matters more to me than my opinion of me, I guess. Decluttering becomes growth. I've used my incredibly amateur self-counseling skills to dig to something that resembles a root cause or something I can probably benefit from paying attention to. And from realizing that, it becomes easier to use the notebook as a notebook because I see it only as a tool to be used as a notebook. It's not my potential, it's not my future, it's not my projects or my dreams, it's just a notebook. But the thing is, if you have something that makes you genuinely quite upset when you think about getting rid of it, that fuel for actually using it. Tell yourself that you're going to use it or lose it and you'll find that you'll feel more encouraged to use it and you can start pointing your life in the direction that 
once upon a time you merely hoped it would run in. It will be a lot less exciting than making the initial purchase, I can promise you that. But if you can practice discipline and enduring discomfort, you will make or do something great, whether it's a novel you wanna write or a business you wanna start, a skill you wanna gain, an inner journey you wanna go on, a book you wanna read, a piece you wanna compose, anything. If you bought something to help you get your goals, use it to get your goals, practice discipline and face discomfort. Maybe give yourself a deadline. If you don't use something by the end of next month, for example, then you probably are never gonna use it. And again, that's totally, totally fine. Accept it and move on. Spend your time and your energy on things that matter more. But if you refuse to accept it and you let that refusal burn bright, then that's when you can make magic happen because you've proven to yourself that it does actually really matter to you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to my patrons for their continued amazing support. And I will see you very soon. Sending you lots of love. Bye. Roll up, roll up, let me embed a story you'll never forget. A drip, drip, drowning in debt now. You can't buy your way out.